Bullet Street. A boy from Manchester found his home here in W12. It's not quite the same W12 now as it was then. Then it was a place of, well, the White City, Dog Track was just up the road. There were Spielers, there were bookies, there was drinkers. There was Stan. In the middle of all of that. Somehow encompassing all of that. Taking it to his heart. He had the Notting Hill boys as his Praetorian guard looking after him. He had Don Shanks. Now I want to have a word with Don in a minute. How hard has Don worked in this last few weeks? Please, round of applause. What you get from Don Shanks, and what you get from all of those people who knew Stan, is a word that I think sometimes gets overused in our modern society. It's love. They loved him. How could you not love that man? A rascal, wayward, you certainly wouldn't want to rely on him, you wouldn't want him marrying your daughter. But what a gentleman. One of the kindest, one of the quietest, one of the most unassuming, one of the most humble, geniuses I've ever encountered. He's our genius. And as long as there are blue and white hoops, the name of Stanley Bowles will forever be remembered. Not just here with W12, there's people from Carlisle, there's people from Manchester, there's people from Brentford, from Orient, maybe even someone from Nottingham Forest that we're not his manager. <laughs> because we will never and I think you can say this with absolute surety, we will never see his like again. I, when, one of the times I spoke to Stan, I said to him, do you feel envious of the footballers now who are only a quarter of a million pound a week? He'd be only a quarter of a million pound a week. He, he, he'd be playing along, as I said, you know, for Barcelona or something. He said, no, of course not. He would only have been in the dog track anyway. <laughs> because he didn't want that. He didn't do it for that. Can we all, ladies and gentlemen, raise a glass, and Stanley could raise a glass, to the king of Australia, to Stanley Bowles. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Stanley! 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 Born is the king of Loftus Road. Where's Dom? Where's Dom Shanks? Come on, come over here, Dom. Like, first of all, I know you and him were muckers and mates, and you still are. And what I think what you've done in the last few weeks has been phenomenal. What was he like to play alongside? No, it was dead easy to play with Stan. Just getting the ball, he do the rest, you know. Um, if he didn't play, we sort of struggle a little bit. But um, when you sort of a defender and you're just looking to get the release ball up and summon up the front or whatever, you know, you smash one up the stand. It's a bad pass. Somehow we'd like control it, keep the ball, buy you a bit of time. And you know, that's what he was like, he never, he never wasted anything, he never gave the ball away, you know. Um, a lot of times we're under pressure and you're looking, well, where can we sort of get them arrested? Get, get it a stand, you get a free kick, you'll beat someone and put them on the back foot. And job done, yeah. He was, he was great at the moment. What was he like to run with? What was he like as a mate? Well, I don't know all the running, Stan was the answer. I introduced him to everybody. Stan just like have a drink, a cigarette, have a beer and a bet. That was about it, you know. But no, he was good, he was a lot of fun. Really. I mean, you know, the, the stories of you two are legion, and we've mentioned the van, and the arrests, and all of this sort of stuff. Was it as much fun as it seemed, or were you thinking, good God? Well, every time we weren't, obviously, they were being handcuffed and taken down to jails and getting smashed over there by the police. That was not fun, I'm sure. Some people like that, right? But, uh, um, yeah, both times we got completely uh, exonerated, nothing to do with it whatsoever. And, um, but it was all good for Stanley because you see he'd get the big sort of deal with the newspapers. The next day they'll be ringing him up and say, like, two grand, I know. We'll do that again next week, no, yeah, okay. You know, and um, no, he didn't care. You know, we were beat up on the lift in, in the lift going down to the police station in Belgium. They took us in, into the lift, we're sort of handcuffed, there's about two of them there. 
We're down and down, seeing forever, we're about down down the mines. We've got the little bottom there, we've got the little bottom, and that was it. Um, bang, 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 bang. We're locked up for about another five hours in release without charge. And the charge was that, that one, I, I would take full responsibility for. It was two o'clock in the morning, I said to we went back to the hotel, it was whatever we've read, probably isn't right, this is the true story. Now back to the hotel, I said, right, Stan, we'll get a drink, the bar's closed. I said, I'll bet you a five and get a drink. I said, all we've got to say to them is quit getting the brandy. So we're going there, all of a sudden, I collapsed on the floor, make out, I'm doing this, that, and the other, and Stan said, quit getting the brandy. He went and got me the brandy. I drank the brandy, I jumped up, had a miracle. Thank you very much for the night. Lying in bed, about 15 minutes later. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm having a nightmare. I can hear dogs barking and painful walking and hear them big heavy steps. All of a sudden, they've stopped at that door and they're banging like you wouldn't believe. And I said, Stan, it's for you, I think. And the next thing you know, it's shouting and screaming, open the door, hold and knock it down. So with that, get up, open the door. About four of them there, you know, in great big noise, leather things that Battens, dogs. And I've looked at Stan and said, excuse me, swear, but I've got to swear at him. Stan, you ain't done fucking nothing wrong with you, man. I haven't done nothing. What have you done? So I've done nothing, nothing at all. Anyway, that was it. I'm lying there in bed. All of a sudden they say to Stan, get up, we're going. You're coming with us. So Stan said, I'm going nowhere. And he's pulled the blankets over and like, with that, the guy's got up, he's pulled the gun out and he's pulled it against his ankle. He says, where's your passport? And he's gone, piss off. <laughs> with that, I've got up, I've got my passport, so I think you'll find that in order. And um, hence, taken away down the cells, I think Frank said he was amazing, and poor old Frank had to deal with that. And, um, then it all just went, went to the police station, there were about six, seven hours, and um, the end result was released. The end result, no charge, the end result it was uh, a prank that went wrong. What was the yeah. end result of the game? Uh, I don't know, I think we got sent home. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we was in the tournament with Derby County were there, and I think it was the uh, secretary going to Stuart Webb or something, I can't remember his name really, but the Derby guy told everybody about it, and hence it was now common knowledge. Why have you worked so hard to stand there for this but I think, well, you know, he's, he's been a close sort of mate of mine, you know, coming in and out of touch with Stan, you know, he's not, he's not someone I've seen regularly. I was in America for a while in Spain and stuff, but when I come back, I try and catch up with Stan, and um, he was living in sort of Brentford, and, you know, I called him up about four or five years ago at home, and uh, he was really sort of strange on the phone, he didn't really know me, and um, I said, are you all right? He said, yeah, 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 and I called back about a month, month or two later, and he was a bit worse. And then the third time I called, his daughter answered the phone and said, Don, we're about to take the phone away from Dad. He's getting very confused. He doesn't know really who anybody is. He can't sort of talk, and he, so I'm taking it away. And I said, well, how bad is he? And um, at that time, we hadn't really seen him. And then the QPR put the game on for him, and he came down at the against Rotherham here, and he wasn't so bad. And then, like, the last year or so, he's got really, really worse. And um, so we decided to try and get a game. We had a little lunch for him, which went very nicely. And, you know, I think it means everything. He's done everything for us. There's a lot of people here today. A lot of footballers are here. And, you know, Stan was the main man, you know, for getting us a bit of bonus every week. You know, which was uh, very well needed at the time. And um, obviously, me and Stan go with the dogs together and socialise and on the jerry and going out and stuff. And um, it was just generally sort of, you think to yourself, well, he can't do nothing for himself. You know, the harsh reality is, you know, he can't write, he can't talk, he's got no phone, can't work. So let's, we're trying to just make it as nice as we can, make it as comfortable as we can to stand and sort of get through to the next stage of his sort of life. And um, it's the least I can do, and I know that the guys here today, you know, have come along. You know, we've got people, you know, I spoke to Frank with McClintock earlier in the week and his wife isn't very well and we've had a, a hospital from the Harley Street this morning and Frank sent his best wishes along saying yeah, what a great place Stan was. Don Masson on holiday, Dave Thomas on holiday, um, Phil Parks had to go away with Parks, he done a big podcast the other day for him. And um, you know, Don Masson 
which was really quite an incredible midfield player. He played with a lot of the best players in Scotland. And um, I spoke to Don when he came to the Everest Day here. I wasn't here, but I spoke to him on the phone. And um, he just said, well, Sam Bowles is the best player I've ever played with. He was tremendous, you know. And Don Nassim was the number one nutmeg man in the world. He could not make you Don Nassim and not make you again. He never really, really done it. He was incredible. But Stanley, Stan was the man. So whatever we can do, and I thank each and every one of you today for coming along supporting Stan, supporting the day. It's very important. We've done a lot of work, but it doesn't really feel that, you know, it's not tiring. It's something that you enjoy doing because he's a mate and he's in trouble and we're trying to help him. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I mean, we all know that Stanley Bowles was, was a unique footballer, but he was in a fantastic team, 75, 76. You know, I can still reel off that entire side, plus reserves, you know, because it's the greatest team we will ever see. And I think sitting by me here now is the greatest captain we will ever have. Jerry Francis, come and have a word, please. Stan was a great footballer. Was he exasperating to play with as well, or, or did he just, you know, did he have any thoughts out there on the pitch? Uh, not for me. Um, I think some of the boys were a bit uh, uh, moaning about we needed two balls when we played because we were playing into each other all the time. And, no, from the first time he came in from Carlisle, we just sort of had this rapport with really. um, We were able to play things to each other blind, and we just sort of hit it off from, from a football point of view, and uh, that stuck with us. You know, throughout our career at QPR, uh, our only regret, you know, a few years ago, to understand about it was we both played for England at the same time, I captain England at the same time, but we never played together for England. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, it was just either, uh, I got obviously injured for just over two years, and Stan got injured a couple of times, and didn't play that many times, but we never played once together, which is a great regret for both of us, because obviously, you know, he brought out some fantastic things in my game, and um, you know, I think it's the same. same for him. So uh, it would have been great for us to do what we did at QPR for England. But uh, the side that you talked about, Sunday I think, was a fantastic side. I mean, we should have won that title. It would never happen nowadays. You wouldn't have a game being played ten days later. You know, and certainly I felt we were the best side, best footballing side. Uh, was that the best side you played? Yeah, I think it was out the best side. I think it takes a few years to realise how good that side was and how good the players were in that side. I mean, we had 10 internationals in that side. It was only David Webb and he probably deserved to be an international anyway. Well, he probably told you he was international anyway. <laughs> Can't do that, mate. Um, but um, no, it was a fantastic side. And, um, you know, just one of those things. I mean, our consistency levels for that run in Liverpool as well, you have to give them credit because they were a fantastic team. One time we were better. We were better, but uh, week in, week out, we won, they won. It was an amazing running, and obviously the only downside was the Norwich game. What about all the off the field stuff with Stan? Did you did, did you worry about that at all as his captain? Yeah, I worried a bit because halfway through the season, actually, there was a few problems with Stan. One or two things, and Dave left him out and played me up front for a couple of games. I scored a couple of goals, but I was always on the day to get him back in the side, and um, because he was so vital to us in terms of the way we played, how we played, and um, obviously we won the goal of the season that year against Liverpool. And what a goal that was! <laughs> and I think, you know, we threw the ball out, threw a pass the ball out, Liverpool player never touched it from start to finish, and it was a real team effort and a real team goal, and that showed what we were about that year. And Jerry Francis, captain of England, captain of Queen's Park Rangers. How's the bees? <laughs> yeah, very good indeed. I work with them with the Hollins, of course, at the BBC. Yeah, yes, you do. Yeah. Um, what are your memories of Stan? Good ones? Fantastic ones. Um, it's like Jerry is saying, you, you give it to the guy that is going to score a goal. And he's not in all this diving business. Now, I'd say, Stan never dived. I've just seen penalties up there. And this guy's trying to whack his ankles and smash them and do that. But he's still going through. And you know when he's going through, he will score. But as he's got the penalties, he's going to score anyway. So it's, uh, you know, he, if you think of all the games that he missed, how many games did he miss 
in that season and that season and that season, three seasons. I would be about maybe two or three. Uh, I'm talking to Jerry there about Dave Sexton left him out a couple of times. Was that because he was because he was going to be wayward? You could say that, yeah, you could say that. But it, no, it, it was just that he wanted to try, Dave was always trying to, to, to move the players around, and he had the squad, he got the squad, and that was maybe that 14, 13, 14 players, and that was it. And everybody knew their job, and everybody knew where to be, what to do. And of course, Jerry was pushing up front, scored goals, he could have scored goals, but would it have weakened it somewhere else? And, uh, and in the end, I think Stan was brought back, and there's Stan again, and he's off his head. That little trick with his left foot, his left foot was like a hand. Like, you know, he could, he'd give it to him, and he'd just, and he'd swish it from one side to the other, and then he'd shape up to score, and then he'd go past someone. It was majestic. I've just seen this, I'm looking up there, and I can still see it, there's goal after goal after goal after goal. Stan's taking it, Stan's scoring. There's also, wait, oh wait, well, I'm Jerry, I'm going to say, the Jerry one, to go through there, I pulled a hamstring for you after that game, that was the first game of the season, I think, and I pulled a hamstring, stretching for something or other, and Mickey Lynch came in for me, but Jerry scored that majestic goal against Liverpool, just drifted, but again, with manoeuvring the body around, similar in the way of beating people, and... But well, that's two inside. Phil Parks at the back. I mean, Dave Clement, Gillon. I mean, what a team that was. You mentioned Thomas. We haven't, you know, we haven't mentioned the, the, the main goal scorer in the, in, in the side. Go on. Don Gibbons. Of course I can do it. That's Donnie Gold. He's a big bugger. He used to come in, flick, flick a few. But Dave Thomas used to clip, clip it from one side to the other. There's Don Gibbons. Yeah, on his own. We'll never see the likes again of that team at, at a club like Queen's Unfortunately, at, at the moment, they've not had anything too much to eat, but you could if you're one. <laughs> we'll get out there, it's about 10 minutes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you do still make the first team now. Yeah, that I expect. That I expect. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, we're all all we want is 25 grand a week and just just be on for 10 minutes and walk off and that's it but that, no i think i was i was on 175 a week 175 grand quick quick <laughs> taxed <laughs> I'm sure Jerry was on more than me. I'll be honest, you say Jerry. But I had this argument later. I know, I can joke about that. But I, there, was so none of that. there was none of that animosity <laughs> towards each other. I've got to say, we loved each other, we worked for her, and we would do, you know, I'd chase somebody, I'd work somebody, they would do the same for me, and we would play in the positions that, oh, were made as a dream. And you've got to say, Dave Sexton made those players and just. Open the door and off they go. David Webb would come from his pitch, his um, motor, motor car pitch, round the corner, reach the game on a game, day game, and he would come in and David would be saying, shit, where is he? Where is he? And all of a sudden he'd turn up, put, just go in there, put the kit on, go on there, run it on the pitch, and that was it. He went, yeah, I'm okay, and off he goes. I mean, you do these things nowadays. Well, all the stories of Stan being at the White City, you know, how about for a game started? Yeah, well, he was, he, uh, well, there was there's one story which I, I, I tell, is that we had the, the sort of pre-match stuff, and there was also the work before the, the start of the season. It's just sort of, you know, another little game up at, up at the, um, what was it, near, uh, gosh, Training room. Yeah, yeah. And we got there, and he, he obviously had a good win the night before, because he had a grand in his pocket. <laughs> he had a grand. He didn't stay there long. No, no, but he said, he said, whatever you do, he said, I'll give it to you, and I'll put it, I'll put it down my shorts, right? Just in case. Right? So we do it, and we're playing the usual stuff, and tippy-tappy outside, and also there's a couple of heavies come through. We're standing. You know, is he about? Where is he? I went, I have no idea. And of course, there's, then Stan's out there and then, oh, Stan! 
I don't know, and they call him up, call him up. But obviously, you can have any money on it. I've got the money. Right? So anyway, he finishes that, and the whole day finishes. It's been a super day, everything like that. Stan went, uh, you got the money? I mean, it's been warm, it's down here. Where are you there? Why is it? There's a thousand pounds. So he said, right, brilliant. He said, I'm off tonight. I'm going off tonight. So I said, Stan, would it be a good idea to just give me half of it? Half of it. And then you can come in on the morning and you've got half of it, at least. You went, bloody good idea on really, that, terrific. Walking off, you went, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. And he comes back and I went, are you sure? I took a fiver. No, he went, no, no, no. Off he goes, gone. I come in in the morning, and there I am, I'm trying to have a little job, a little twist and say, Stan, how are you doing? He went, you've got 50 p. <laughs> <laughs> and that was him. And he did that in a day, he did that in a day and a night. And, and, but, you know, but no regrets? No, no, he wasn't, he wasn't horrible or angry or anything, or, or even sort of miserable in trying to get the ball and trying and trying. That was Stan, in a nutshell. That was Stan. <laughs> what a man. Thank you very, very much, Stories. Now, it's kind of apt that we mentioned money there, because that's why we're here. We've got to raise some money for Stan. I mean, we can share all the memories, we can marvel in the football, we can laugh at the stories and the antics, but we're here to help the man. And raising money is the reason that we're here today. And as part of that, I want to bring up now Barry Silkman. Where's Barry? Right, come over here, Mr. Silkman. A man who's quite good at getting money. <laughs> All right, Barry. Right, now we're going to have an auction. Um, I don't, this, you're in charge of your audience, because this is your territory. Um, get your hands in your pockets, or get, if you keep your money down your shorts like John Owens, get your hands down there and bid some money on all of these things that we've got because it's all going to make Stanley's later years or whatever Stanley's got left. Can we have a great big hand for Robert? He's done a great job. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Anyway, come on, let's raise some money for Stan. The first one, Ravi, where are you? Ravi, go and get the shirt out. Get one of the shirts. Somebody bring a shirt up. First shirt we're going to do is to promote Alzheimer's Society. Ashley, come on Ash. Sharper than that, you'll never get a game next week. Okay, this is for Alzheimer's Society, Queen's Park Rangers shirt, signed by Stan. And let me tell you, Stan will not be signing anything again because he's just not physically in a condition to do it anymore. So whoever buys anything now with Stan's signature on, I can assure you, he won't be doing any more. Who wants to start me off at 50 pounds? Somebody start me at 50 pounds. I've got 50 pounds. 60? I've got 200 pounds. Great, brilliant. Gentleman on table 19. 200 pounds. Do I see 210 anywhere? I've got 210 on the far left hand side. Sorry, I can't see your number. I've got 210 on the left. 220 anywhere. I've got 220 over on the right. Have I got 230? 220 by this lovely young lady on the right hand side. Have I got 230 anywhere? I've got 230 over on the left. Let's go 250. I've got 250 on my right. Do I see 260? Do I see, I've got 260 on my left. Do I see 270 on my right? Do I see 300 anywhere? 300 on the far left. Do I see 310? 310 on my left. Do I see 350? I've got 400 pounds on my right. 400 pounds. Do I see 420? I've got 420 on my left. I've got 500 pounds on my left. I've got 600 pounds on my right. I've got 600 on the right. 600 once, do I see 650 anywhere? 650 on my left, do I see seven? I've got 800 pound on my right hand side. Any advance on eight? I've got 850 on the left, do I see nine? I've got GF, GF has come in with a thousand pound. Round of applause for the GF. I've got a thousand pound from GF, do I see 1100? 
thunder everywhere. I've got a thousand pounds from GF. You can't let him beat you. Please don't let him beat you. I've got a thousand ones. Do I see 11? I've got 1100 on my right. Do I see 1200 anywhere? I've got 1100 on my right right. I've got 1500 pounds. I've got 1600 pounds on my left. I've got 1600 pounds on my left. 1600 going once. I've got 1600 going twice. Third and final time. 1600 pounds. Young man on table 24. Round of applause. Thank you very much. of the glass, okay? So Stan's face is engraved at the bottom of the glass. These will never come along again. They normally go for 300 pounds. Who wants to start me on, let's say, 150? I've got 150 in front. Have I got 200 anywhere? I've got 200, young lady on the right-hand side. I've got 250 over on the left. 300? I've got 300, do I hear 350? I've got 350 on the left. I've got 400 on the right. Have I got 450? 450 on the left, have I got 500? Got Stan's ugly boat looking at me, I used to look at that every Saturday night. I've got 450 on my left, have I got 500 anywhere? 450 going once on the left. 450 going twice on the left. A thousand pound in front. GF said, I've got to get something today. Thousand pound from Jerry. Do I hear 1100 anywhere? I've got a thousand pound from Jerry in front. These will never be seen again, ever. I've got a thousand pound once from Jerry. And I've got 1100 anywhere. What's happened to that side of the room? That side of the room, they haven't made a bid yet. Can you wake them up that side? I think they're in a coma. Okay. I've got a thousand pound from Jerry once. Have I got 1100 anywhere? Thousand pound once. Thousand pound twice. Massive round of applause, Jerry Fountain. Okay. Jerry Francis has paid a thousand pound. Can we have a round of applause because he has donated them back to the auction? I'm sure he must be drunk. He's never done anything like this ever. I've played with him for years. He never bought me a Coca-Cola. Every time we went to get a Coke, he'd say, Silk, I've run out of money and got a pony. Okay, so who wants to start me off with 400 pounds? 400 pounds on my left. I've got 450. 450 there. I've got 500. 500 on my left. I've got 550. 550. I've got 500 on the far left. Have I got 550 anywhere? 500 on the far left once. 500 going twice. I've got 550. 550. Have I got 600 anywhere? 550 to the left. Have I got 600? 550 going once. 550 twice. Third and final time. Big round of applause for the table on the left. Big round of applause for Jerry Francis. All right, I knew you'd come good eventually. I've got two tray on the left. Anyone want to give me 250? 250, table 35. Do I hear 270? 250, 270, table at the back. Two, 300 pounds, table 35. Do I hear 350? I've got 350, table 31. Have I got 400? 350, table 31 going once. 350, table 31 going twice. For the third and last time, it's all yours, table 350, 35, 350 pounds, right at the back, table 31. Round of applause, thank you. Wonderful. 
Okay, the next one is a QPR shirt signed by some members of the 7576 squad. Not sure who's on it. Actually, any idea who's on it? Phil Shanks, Phil Parks, Dean Gillard. Phil Shanks, Phil Parks, Gilly. GF. Who's, where's Gilly gone? Gilly's gone. He was a left back when I was here, Gilly. Johnny Hollins. Anyone's here, everyone who's here today, plus Phil Parks. Who wants the first hand up is going to get this because we're going to run out of time. The third, I'm wrong, I'm 25 grand. Are you sure you want it? 25 grand, table 32. Okay, this is the first hand that I see go up for 200 pound takes it. Far left. Far left, 200 pound. Round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. What a man, I told you he was going to get him die out of people. Gary Silvers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just two more minutes of your time before we go up to see that hello turf. Thank you to Jerry and John and all the guys on this table, full of greats of Greece Bar Rangers. Mahoney, to Joanne, to Finney sitting over there, to Sarah, to everyone who's helped today. But we all know why we're here. Thank you to Barry Silkman, who was, a, you know, can you pick Barry, will you be my agent, please? We all know why we're here today. We're here because the greatest player, and to my mind, the greatest man, who will ever grace this bit of WH world needs our help. So I want to say thank you to all of you, but more than anything else, thank you for all the joy to Stanley Bowles. Stanley!